the sine rule finding an angle. So two examples here. The first example is, is very straightforward. We're going to try and find the angle C. In the second case, this is called the ambiguous case, and there are actually two answers. Let's do the first one. We'll see here we know that angle A is 60 degrees. We know that A is 6. We know that C is 4. And we know we've got to find out what angle C is equal to. So we'll start off by setting up the sine rule. And now we'll have that C over sine C will be equal to A over the sine of A. Now we can flip these and write this as the sine of C over C is equal to the sine of A over A. So the sine of C over 4 will be equal to the sine of 60 over 6. Therefore, sine of C must equal 4 times the sine of 60, multiplying both sides by 4, divided by C. This means that C must be equal to the inverse sine of 4 sine 60 over 6. And that comes out to approximately 35 degrees. Now you notice I've drawn a line down here, making that side 4. Of course, this is 120 degrees in here. Of course, that will be an isosceles triangle, and that will be the supplementary angle. Now, we go through the same process again right, to find out what C is using this angle. But because 120 degrees is the supplement of 60, or it's in the second quadrant, if we replace that 60 there with 120, it'll be the same thing, and we'll get exactly the same answer. Of course, you wouldn't bother doing that, but just to show you that uh, there's only one solution to C. However, this is a different case. This is the ambiguous case. So we'll set this up as before, and we'll start, start off now with finding what angle A is. So we'll have the sine of A over A is equal to the sine of C over C. So the sine of A will be equal to, now, A is 7, so it's 7, the sine of 20, over 3. So when you work that out, A comes out to 53 degrees. However, if we go across here to this side here, we put in 3 there, which we could easily do, because that makes that equal to that, and proceed in the same manner. This is a 53 degrees in there, but this angle here, right, would be actually 127 degrees. Now, if you give the diagram like that, I'd be a bit mean to say, we expect you to work at 127 degrees, but if you're just given the information only and not the diagram, then you'd have to set up the diagram yourself and give the two answers. You need to be very careful with the ambiguous case. A lot of people get it wrong under exam conditions. The easy way to remember it is this. You'll notice that I've got the smallest side adjacent to the angle that you're given. And this one here, the smaller side, not the 7, the 3, is opposite that. So that might be one way. Oh, the kookaburras are waking up. So there it is. Just remember that if the smaller side is opposite the an given angle, then you're up for the ambiguous case. Probably the best way of all is to actually draw the diagram, and then you'll, it'll be quite obvious then. Okay, well, that's the ambiguous case. Thank you for watching.